So hello, my name is Maciej and I want to do a quick show and demo of a small utility that I have just open sourced. Well, it is just in time delivery because I put the 0 0.1 uh, version today. It is called Vendorificator and I don't know if you are familiar with the discussion named Vendor Everything. It is a point of view that if you have a project, you should keep all your dependencies together in the same repository. To be independent of original author pulling the source offline, to be independent of uh, Ruby Gems break in, to be independent of uh, PyPy uh, being offline, which happens way too often, and so on. And you may agree or disagree or agree partially, but uh, it's worth Googling the discussion. And Vendorificator is a tool that uh, works with Git to make possible to not only include the vendor upstream sources, but also make it possible to keep track of it, keep track of what pieces do you have, where they came from, uh, in which versions, and what are the local changes, because there are always local changes. It works only with Git. It is written in Ruby, so it is available as a Ruby gem. It works by creating a pristine orphan branch for all the upstream modules, which means that every module has its branch, which is only then merged into master or whatever branch you work on, which also means you always have a list of modules, you always have a difference between what was originally downloaded and what you work with, and so on. And if you ever go through an, a startup acquisition or any license compliance audit, your auditors will thank you for that. So uh, to get started, install Vendorificator gem in your Git repository. And uh, the main configuration lives in uh, so-called vendor file, or if you don't want to clutter your directory, just ven config slash vendor rb, and run vendor sync to synchronize, to download. The now the quick demo or presentation how it looks like, how it works. It's an example vendor file. It uh, gets opscultref cookbooks. I don't want all the dependencies, uh, just some. I want to download VirtualEnd for Python, some cookbooks, and something for Git. It is a bit customized. It is not a simplest example, but it shows that it works with uh, various kind of upstream modules, that it is extensible, it is hackable. And let's see what can we do with that. When we try to look at the status, we see that there are some new modules and that metadata of, uh, cook, of chef cookbooks cannot be read, so it cannot figure out the dependencies. Let's try to sync that. Uh, and uh, right now, this is not a live demo because right now the vendorificator would download a lot of stuff and it takes a while. But it downloads all the specified modules and their dependencies. And after that, we can see the status that everything is up to date, including the dependencies, including the cookbooks that the ones that we specified depend on. We can see that for every module, for every downloaded piece of software, a separate branch has been created. A separate tag in Git has been created for every version of download. And we can see that the branches are orphan. They don't inherit from uh, master. They include only the pristine, pure upstream source which also makes it easy to merge from the pristine branches to different branches of your uh, project without running the risk of accidentally merging in some changes of your own code. And we can see that in vendor subdirectory, all kinds of stuff has been downloaded. And I don't like the uh, virtual env piece. I want to edit it. I want to have only some of the files, not all of them, not all support scripts and so on, just the documentation and uh, 
the main Python script. The rest is clutter. So I change the vendor file. I can always add a block, a code block to edit whatever was downloaded. I also upgrade the version at dash one or whatever to let Vendorificator know that it has been changed. Uh, and in the status output, uh, we can see it is this one is outdated. When we sync, the outdated module is downloaded. It is always if Vendorificator downloads something, it is always downloaded from scratch into an empty directory, no incremental downloads, no assuming that everything is the same, to be sure that what was downloaded is clean original upstream source. It has been downloaded, unpacked, tagged, as previously. And we can see that there are less files, I didn't put the tags in screenshot, but a new tag also has been created there. And uh, in the log, we can see that uh, in the pristine, the change was introduced into the pristine branch with a new tag and merged again into master. So all the changes in modules, all the upgrades, all the updates work on the same pristine branch which means if you update a dependency, go from virtual env 1.8 to 1.9 when, when it is released, you also have a clear difference of what happened between the previous version you used and the current version. And if you introduced any local changes, pulling a new version is nothing more than a git merge. Uh, if you have conflicts, you will have to resolve it, but it, I don't think it gets any easier. And uh, Vendorificator also supports keeping track of local changes. For a test, I have uh, changed, introduced a single line change, a single <coughs> command, and I can run vendor diff, uh, and it shows me a git diff, a git difference uh, for all the branches that are that have any changes between current work tree and the pristine branch. I can see what exactly I have changed, how exactly I have diverged from upstream. I can view the same as a git log of changes that are on my branch but are not on the pristine branch. And this is also good to review and keep track of your local updates, of your local patches, of uh, what can be, I don't know if you work with open source, some of the changes you may want sometimes to push to the original author to give back to open source. If you work on a single branch, you won't keep track of it. It will be hard to untangle. This way, you keep all the changes you, and you also stay accountable to whoever reviews if you're uh, okay with the license of the module or not. So that would be it. Uh, now is the five minutes for questions, I suppose. And uh, are there any? Yes. Uh, the question was how it works with gem file. Actually. To be honest, I don't use it with gems. For this, if I want to vendor, I use a bundle cache from gem, for gem file, and I don't think it could be integrated. On the other hand, if you uh, want to have some really custom uh, gem, for example, you copy it from Git, uh, from an unreleased branch, and then uh, on top of it add your own modifications, you can just add it to vendor file, have it in directory, and point gem file to that directory. This will this should also work. Okay. I guess that's it then.
Thank you.